Visual art is often seen as the epitome of creativity, but we don't spend much time thinking about why, especially in a more specific domain like photography. What makes photography creative? Well, what makes anything creative? Through the individualistic approach, creativity is defined as a new mental combination that is expressed in the world, according to R. Keith Sawyer in Explaining Creativity, the Science of Human Innovation. By that criteria, photography is more difficult to master creatively than other forms of art that allow the creator to visualize anything in their imagination because photography merely captures scenes from the existing visual world. As the famous photographer Philippe Halsman wrote in 1961, photographers have the choice of taking an existing moment or making a photograph. The latter describes his own style exactly. The visual effects he implemented in his art went beyond what the world had seen before in the domain, even in real life. Halsman's style illustrates one way to be creative in photography, but what about in scenarios when the photographer cannot go outside the bounds of the existing world? There has been extensive research to explore what we, as humans, find appealing about photos. Before I go further, I'm going to conduct an experiment. Look at the following series of images. Now, think about which photos stood out to you. Which did you like the most? What you just watched was a replication of a study done at the University of Vienna in 2008. In the original experiment, 16 students were quickly shown images that they had to mark as either familiar or unfamiliar, or like or dislike. It was determined that photos of higher quality were seen as more familiar, and familiarity correlated with likability. The most liked images were natural scenes of high quality, followed by human-made scenes of high quality. Therefore, it can be concluded that high image quality is most preferred by the average viewer, and a natural scene is less so. This is not the only study that has shown audiences to prefer familiarity in photographs. A combination of aestheticians have declared that humans generally find these features to be aesthetically pleasing. Symmetry, complexity or simplicity, novelty or familiarity, proportion or composition, and semantic content. However, a socioculturally judged work of photography is judged differently. The sociocultural definition of creativity is the generation of a product that is judged to be novel and also to be appropriate, useful, or valuable by a suitably knowledgeable social group. Professional photographers are seen as the most qualified to judge in their domain because they have background knowledge and experience working with camera technology. Unlike non-experts, professional photographers prefer photographs that are more expressive and uncertain. They more strictly judge quality and flaws in lighting, lens, composition, and subject. In a study done at the University of Illinois, art experts and non-experts viewed artworks, and their judgments were compared. It was calculated that the non-experts most closely agreed on ratings of complexity and dynamics, while the experts most closely agreed on originality, interestingness, and overall quality. Also notable, the experts valued originality much more in their overall definition of aesthetic quality. Looking back at the sociocultural definition of creativity, the word useful is used. As in all forms of art, purpose is not straightforward to name. However, many photographers have cited that they hope to elicit an emotional response from viewers of their work, as the Cambridge Handbook of Creativity Across Domains puts it. Therefore, a photo that generates emotions from its audience has creative value. This image, known by many as the most famous photo in the world, is a perfect example. Afghan Girl, taken by Steve McCurry in 1984, pictures a 12-year-old orphan in a refugee camp on the Afghan-Pakistani border. It was the cover of National Geographic in 1985 and the magazine's most successful ever. More importantly, though, it inspired many to volunteer to work in the refugee camps and sparked National Geographic to set up the Afghan Children's Fund. The recognition that this photograph received was partially due to its masterful composition and quality and partially due to its powerful message. Although photography seems like a solitary activity, the domain includes many layers of collaborators. 
The individual's creativity is made up of a sequence of small decisions, when to pick up and point the camera, when to press the shutter, and choosing which photos are good enough to print. After that, however, the gallery curators and owners have the task of evaluating and selecting the best images between many photographers for the possibility one of them gets a gallery. For an artist to get another gallery, the process must be repeated with different galleries, curators, and patrons within the field. Viewers only get to know a photographer as their portfolio is funneled down by numerous intermediaries, and because evaluation and selection is a crucial part of the creative process, the intermediaries can be considered collaborators in the work. The American sociologist Howard S. Becker wrote that art worlds, rather than artists, make works of art. This is all to say that the definition of creative photography has never been and never will be constant. 100 years ago, photography was not recognized as a creative art at all. The photography market as it is today was not even really formed in the US until the 1970s. Before then, many people were skeptical that a craft that depended on a machine could ever be considered creative. The sociocultural shift that occurred is constantly occurring all around us. Who knows, maybe 100 years from now, something like making a sink will be seen as art. It's all relative.